Today at the Racerex Motocross Show on AllySports.com, we've got one round of Lucas Oil A May Pro Motocross Championship Racing in the books, which means we actually have even more questions than we did last week. So we'll try to get the answers. We'll talk to Chad Reed, Brett Metcalf, Ryan Sipes, and others as we dig deep into round two from Freestone, Texas. Coming up next. Welcome to your Racer X Motocross show. It's round two of the Lucas Oil A May Pro Motocross Championship. It's the Freestone National here in Texas on AllySports.com. Jason Wagan, of course, joined by Paul Lindsay. We had great racing in both classes last week at Hangtown. Don't forget the women as well. They're all back here in Texas. However, everything we learned there might be out the window because it's a totally different race day when you come to the Lone Star State. Well, obviously we know about the humidity here in Texas. A little bit flatter layout, but a lot of jumps, a lot of ruts. They bring in a lot of sand as traditional these, these past few years in all the outdoor nationals. So it's going to be a, a rough track and extremely hot as always here in Texas. All right, that could be a separator. Now, one rider on the tour knows exactly the difference between Northern California and Texas because he drove the whole distance. Let's talk to Brett Metcalf about his road trip and his ride at Hangtown. Well, it was nice last weekend at Hangtown to kind of get the first round out the way and felt like it went pretty well for me. Uh, it was nice just to be back with the Rockstar Makita Suzuki team and being back on the racetrack after the injury in Supercross and just nice to be back out there racing really with everybody. So um, yeah, I enjoyed it. Everything went well. I ended up a fifth overall, 5-5. Uh, five, five. So, you know, something to build off of and learn from that first race. But uh, it's nice to get it out the way and now start really focusing on each round. Tried a little different approach, normally I stay back in California. Uh, this year I came out the week, as soon as we got done with Hangtown, we drove here and got to uh, spend some time out here in the heat and humidity uh, down at a friend's place at the Weavers. So I had a good week of riding and stuff and uh, really that's how I've tried to prepare. You know, we don't get that humidity in California like they do in, on the East Coast or down in Florida. So I just tried to come out to Texas early and get some riding in. and. Other than that, you know, I'll be wearing uh, probably a Camelback if it's really hot tomorrow. Get some fluids on board. Uh, other than that, just trying to conserve your energy during the moto, I think, is the most important thing. And basically, on the way over, we drove all through the night. I slept most of it. But uh, we had two drivers, Scott and Shane. They drove straight from Hangtown, you know, have 25 hours and move five minutes from our destination, five miles from our destination, and a deer bounced out on the road and we smoked it. and. Uh, Unfortunately, bang the the deer died, <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, crushed the front end in and looks a bit raggedy. So we got a little Frankenstein patch job this weekend with some zip ties. Um, but uh, she's all good and had a good week still. You know, it was fun and got to ride a rhino and play around a little bit as well as get my riding in. Okay, let's talk about the uh, 450 class that Brett Metcalf races in. Uh, you and I were talking this week. A lot of similarities you're seeing between 2010 and now 2011. Well, Ryan Villapoto, obviously, Supercross champ, a lot of responsibilities, a lot of sponsor obligations, yep. uh, PR appearances, everything. We saw that last year with Ryan Dungey, came yep. into Hangtown, a little bit under the weather. Uh, obviously, right here in Texas last year is where Ryan Dungey turned things around. I think we hopefully can see the same thing out of Ryan Villapoto. And another similarity, of course, Chad Reed goes out and dominates Hangtown last year. Does it again this year, a convincing performance. I have to agree with Lars on that one. Chad Reed, you're a bad dude. That yeah. was an awesome yeah. performance at Hangtown. It was exciting for me to watch. And uh, you know, the resurgence of Ryan Dungey is saying, hey guys, not just yet, this is my championship. Yeah, so break this down a little bit. I mean, on the surface, it would look like, wow, Chad Reed actually outlasted Ryan Dungey, who's the fitness guy. But you and I are kind of theorizing that, it depends on the track. Reed was really a technician out there last week, and, and, and you're thinking he's learning to save energy and ride smarter as he gets older. As you're, you're right, we did talk about that a lot, and I think you're right. I think the older Chad Reed gets, the better he gets at breaking down a track and just being a smart racer, and uh, he's very analytical in his approach to everything he does on a bike in Supercross, and now we're seeing it outdoors. It was an incredible performance last week. I think he just outthought everybody on that track. Maybe not necessarily outlasted Ryan Dungey, because we all know what kind of conditioning Ryan Dungey brings right. to the table, 
but so does Chad Reed. Let's not kid ourselves. So he, he ran an incredible race, and right now, obviously, tied with uh, Brian Dungey, which is <laughs> yeah. a, a point of contention at the moment on the red plate. Right. So we'll get into that later. Yeah, uh, you mentioned eerie similarities to last year and this year. Well, we actually found Chad Reed on the track, on a jump, where he definitely got some attention last year to ask him about this year versus last year. Let's go to Chad. All right, here with Chad Reed in the section that you made up a whole bunch of ground on last year, but it looks like uh, it's been changed up, and it might be changed up even more by the time we're done with practice tomorrow. Who knows what this section really has in store? Yeah, who knows? I mean, last year was a really tough section, and similar to this, the first one was small, and then, uh, you know, in my feeling, hitting yeah. a wall jump for 35 minutes really isn't that much fun, especially when it's windy out and it's 100 plus degrees. So in the race, everybody was breaking, so the dirt kind of built up and it allowed me to uh, actually jump from the braking bump all the way over this thing, um, which allowed me to have quite a quite an advantage. But it was scary, but it beat hitting a wall jump, you know? So it was a lot of fun. So, but even with the time you made up though, you'd rather just have not dealt with it at all and given those two seconds back in that section. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of wall jump, especially, uh, I, I can guarantee you the guy who built this has clearly never raced a 35 minute <laughs> race in heat and in a brutal racetrack. So, uh, you know, but this is his way of challenging us. So we'll see how it works out. I want to compare Hangtown to Texas. Both tracks are obviously rough. They're both difficult, but that has ruts and square stuff. You got to be really precise. This is more of a sand track. Uh, is this less precise? Is this more of a, just a wide open blitz as opposed to the way the track was last week? Or am I another guy that hasn't ridden 35 minutes of heat and I have no idea what I'm saying? No, I think, uh, you know, last week, I mean, we had some elevation changes last week where we kind of went up hills, down hills. Um, the, the dirt, normally Hangtown is really hard. Um, and if you look around here, it also looks quite hard off of the racetrack. So uh, quite a lot of sand put down. So I think it'll be similar. You know, I think we got some wind and we're expecting that again tomorrow. So I think uh, Key's going to be keeping it, the track, you know, with some water on it. And yeah. we'll see how that plays out. I think it, they're going to have to put a lot of water down. So that creates, you know, a rough, ruddy racetrack for us. So um, looking forward to it. I, I, I enjoy this place. I think it's a... Uh, a fun place um the heat is always a factor i think so i think you know staying cool and getting a whole shot so you can get out front because when we're in the back yeah. it's really uh, there's a lot of trees and it's hard to see so anytime you can get out front clear your vision and actually be able to see um the lines underneath the shaded areas is, is always a you know good key to have okay so last year you come in here with a win you come in here jump in this section you might be able to do that again you like this track everything's similar even Coming in as the points leader, we're running the red plate. Looks good, right? With a 22 instead of a 1. But there's a 1 in my race that actually has a red plate as well. So, I don't know. I, I feel like I missed something along the line. Co-points co leader? I guess I'm a co-points leader. Co leader. If that's true, I wonder if Dungey will split his win bonus with me. Do, do we, we do we both officially win the first race? Can we split the win bonus, you know? like I, I feel like I'm, I got the short end of the stick on that one. <laughs> I am somewhat employed by MX Sports Pro Racing, and they're going to tell me that uh, we only break ties at the end of the series. But I'm going to say that the tiebreaker is available right now. Same tiebreaker, right? Who, who wins the most races? I mean, I know the trophy I got. It, <laughs> I mean, it, it clearly said first place. So I don't know. Maybe he, maybe there's two of them. Did he get a first place one as we, well? We had results on the screen. Yeah. It said second. But there's two bikes over there, two two twos, one with a white background and one with a red. What's happening here? Yeah, it seems like Lars was all excited and wanted red backgrounds, but I think I'm going to stick with the white ones tomorrow. Just keep, no! Just keep it real, you know? I, I, I'm not here to share nothing. I, Get out of here! We'll try to win this one and take it to Mount Morris and uh, really represent the red. So the guy who got second will be the only one running red. This You like stirring it up, man. So it's going to be second. I actually, it's gonna look that is way. What, I, what I won, right? It's going to look that way. Yeah, yeah. All right, this is very confusing. We'll, we'll, we'll see what we have tomorrow. All right, well, we'll see Chad Reed with a red or white plate tomorrow, depending. He'll just... Likes to stir it up, like we said. Let's move to the 250 class, and Blake Baggett won that race. But this was not necessarily his destiny. It was a long road for him to get here. It was not signed, sealed, delivered straight out of the amateur ranks of this team. Talk about his uh, journey. Well, as a lot of you might remember, at the end of 2009, it was down between Baggett and Wilson for that last spot on the mighty Pro Circuit, Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki team. Right. Wilson gets the ride, goes 1-1 uh, at Powell last year, appears to be the heir apparent to the Nationals this year with guys Kennard and Porcel moving out of the class. Well, guess what? Baggett finally gets his chance. He's got a new lease on life. Maybe this is destiny. I think Lars should have stayed out on the track with that pit board because Blake Baggett <laughs> is a bad dude, too, after last weekend. It was an unbelievable performance, and uh, think about how he could have veered the other way. He didn't get the ride. He had to go to Steel City and Southwick and earn it at the end of 09. If he had not gotten a decent ride last year with Suzuki, who knows where this kid could be right now? Well, unfortunately, in our sport, you know, there's only so many coveted rides, and yep. Blake and his family, they they really want it. He's a hardworking kid, comes from a good family, and uh, he 
luckily is here. He's making the most of the opportunity. Things could have gone different. We've certainly seen it with plenty of riders in the past go the wrong direction. Now we beg the question. Back in the amateur ranks, Wilson Baggett, they used to be rivals. They came through with the same speed, the same pace. Now they're both in the same team. Now they're both potential title contenders. Supposedly they're good now, but who knows, man, 11 more races like this could start getting tricky in the pits again. Well, and especially for Wilson because he's been there. He's the second year on the team. Now Baggett comes back into his life and you know rekindles that rivalry, as you said. And basically, uh, I think we're going to see things heat up in that Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki truck later this summer. A little bit of scuttlebutt about the difference in weight. And uh, yep. you know they're on the same equipment. So uh, Dean, don't let it go to your head, buddy. You're, you're the guy that can still do it. <laughs> don't think about the weight. He's, for every disadvantage there is to the 15 pounds, there's an advantage for his height. So. Yeah, yeah, that's the one thing. Everybody in the Pro Circuit team weighs about the same, except Baggett is like 15, 20 pounds lighter. So if it comes down to a one-on-one -on -one battle, we don't know how it's going to turn out. We are glad to hear this, though. A rider from a different team we thought could challenge those guys that we thought was out is now back in. No Racer X cover curse for this man, Ryan Sipes. Ryan? The crash is kind of one of them things that uh, couldn't really avoid. Somebody got sideways in front of me off the start and uh, high-sided over him, got run over. Um, but. Got back up. I was able to ride a little bit. Started to get sore, and uh, got it checked out. He said, "You know, you don't need to race the second moto." He said, "Go get it, uh, CAT scan or CT scan, whatever." I got that checked out, and I'm all clear. So, rode a couple times this week, and uh, ready to go. All right, we're going to wrap this show up. They've got work to do. You can see they're just putting the Makita truck together here in the pits. The podium backdrop. There isn't even a backdrop on it yet. Interesting, when you come out here on Friday afternoon, it's a totally different atmosphere than race day, Paul. The calm before the storm, right? Right. right? now it's good and breezy. I hope it's this way tomorrow. A lot of guys bonked at this race last year, so hopefully the boys did their homework. going to be four hot motos and a really rough track here in Texas tomorrow. All right. Well, folks, you can, of course, check the action out live on AllySports.com with our first motos, 1 o'clock Central Time, 2 o'clock Eastern. Ally Sports will have all the first motos all year long live, as will Fuel TV. So watch it on TV or the web. And our second motos will start at 10 p.m. Eastern Saturday night on speed. We'll go back to back with 450 and 250 racing. So there's no excuse. You should not miss any of the action here from Freestone. For Paul Lindsay, I'm Jason Wygant. We'll be back tomorrow on Fuel, Ally Sports, and Speed. And don't forget our post show Sunday morning. Thanks for watching.